We want to keep you in touch all year long, so we are going to update you on the entire year. Kevin Woodhouse from The Suburban. Yes. Rhonda Massad from The West Island Blog. We are on Montreal Talks. You can find us on Spotify. It's a podcast, as well as we like to do the video for those of you who are more on to... Visual these, types. Yeah, visual visual types. We're, we're offering it on all levels, and we are going to giggle our way through the news from last year. Now, we don't have everything, because if we did everything, we'd be here for six hours. Yes, and Kevin and I have this tendency to talk and talk and talk, so yeah. we try not to you know, bore you half out of your mind. So we've concised it down to what we think is, what is it, we got six, probably the six most important things that happened... In our opinion. Yes. Completely yeah. in, in our, our opinion. In our humble opinion, so yeah. we could... So be wrong but i don't think so vulnerability big big issue on the west island F homelessness um food and food security issues that started off last so january yeah uh ricochet uh tanya tanya Charon, uh ajoie action jeunesse de west of lille they're working on i know you're part of that too yeah. the big ricochet project and it started off last year they've been they've been working on this for the last few years but one of the things she mentioned was vulnerability in the West Island. Too many youth kids have nowhere to go, nowhere to eat, nowhere to stay. That's safe. When you age out at 18, there is literally nowhere and no programming for kids to yeah. sleep in an emergency situation. That's exactly it. Ricochet is on the move. We are, I'm on that board and... Trying to fill that gap. That's, that's what they're trying to do. So she sort of gave a, a shout out last year and I, I think vulnerability is very important. It's, it's something that we don't want to see fall through the cracks, you know? Falls into the food drives that we did. The, um, that's it. Many organizations across the, across the West Island and the city of Montreal have put on food drives for those that are more vulnerable in our community and the need is growing not decreasing. Correct and her thesis was, <clears throat> Tanya's thesis is, because there's not enough services on the West Island, all those kids affected now have to head into the city and they don't know how they're it works. They're out of their element. That's they're it. They're out of their element, they're not near their home so and we need... trying to get these kids back home means keeping them near home. Correct. So, so the, the the notion is we need services here. So let's let's hope that Ricochet let's 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 hope that works. Yeah, it will work. DDO uh, started their their Meals on Wheels. Correct. Yes. Uh, this year. So yeah, based out of the civic uh, civic center, and that's to help vulnerable seniors. Yeah. So we got you know we got uh, vulnerable uh, teens and, and adolescents on one side, and seniors on the other. I find it remarkable, and I don't think everybody knows this, but John Abbott College has a food bank. Correct. And a student fund. Yeah. That says it all to me. Yeah. Yep. There's really nothing else to say. Guys, it's not as rich out there as people think it is. Everyone's struggling in some capacity. Correct. Patience for your neighbors and reach out when you can. I like to give actual food. Yes. Because I feel like it's actually going to arrive. There's for always sure. that feeling of like, where does the money go? But I, I like to get, and you can give fresh. The West Island Mission started a very intense That's That's, that's another thing. That's right, which is yeah. great. So you can give fresh food and uh, the gardens. The gardens, the that West Island fun. Mission started. That was really neat. Started a tradition, and if you're a corporate citizen out there, we would like you to consider uh, gardens, fresh gardens. If you're gardens. a company with some green space that's available, we went and saw, uh, there was a great company that did it last year. They made these boxes. It was phenomenal. So they're the, basically the whole thing is, is the company is volunteering, giving back, and the mission takes the fresh food and distributes it to those in need. Correct. In the community. So it's not, so we're, we're, when you give fresh food and fresh and good product food, yeah. you're going to have less medical issues. It goes a long issues. way, man. It really well, goes a long way. Less medical issues long run. Yeah. Okay, Rem. Rem. How can we go without the réseau électronique de Montréal? <laughs> How can we miss? We have to do this one. That was a spring story. And, and what happened was the REM's, you know, it's unfolding on schedule. We're seeing it being built. However... It's beautiful, though. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I feel like I'm part of history watching it go up along the trans -Canada. It's a major, major project. We haven't seen something like that in our city for decades so that's that's pretty interesting however parking parking is an issue they had said that there was going to be 2,000 spots 500 spots here 1,500 spaces here Crickets. they're they're disappearing Sorry. and that's a problem and i know it's a problem for cities because i i hear the mayors tell me we want people to take the rem but if they can't get to the rem they're not going to take it they're going to take their cars i'm willing to take the rem right now and figure out the parking second because i find if I look at one more cone, I will have to shoot myself. <laughs> That's right. Like, well, I, do you want to go out? Not really. I'd rather go anywhere but out because I don't want to take my car. When you drive in the city, you got to plan an extra. When I go into the city, I give myself an extra 25, 30 minutes to dodge the cones yep. and find parking. Yeah. So, uh, so that that's that's a. Well, let's just recap the fact that the crane that's near Fairview is called Anne. Yep. The crane that you see near Saint Laurent is called Marie. Marie. Yes. And after the two stations, Saint Anne stations and Marie Curie station in Saint Laurent, Correct. and the borer Alice. Yes. She is currently under the Dorval Airport, digging her way. 
Slowly, um, but yes. Right, slowly but surely, she's digging her way to join up with the other lines. Yes. So that's kind of cool. Edgar Rulo, the mayor of Dorval. He just wants that 700 meters. Would love to have the 700 meters. And that between, he would like to connect the station, the train station to the REM, which is completely logical. Correct. I love the guy and he's right on this one, guys. Point Claire made a lot of, uh, made some news last year. It started off with the, the Pioneer. Uh, there was a lot of talk from, from folks who wanted to save the Pi Pioneer as a heritage building. The city wants to de demolish it and 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 give it to developers for something new. That, as we know, went back and forth. I back love and you forth. guys that love the historical buildings, but I'm going to own this one. I just, it's a moldy building, guys. There was nobody backing this poor lady. She's an owner. Diane of the her said that herself. She's like, <laughs> you know, I don't need keep. I'm paraphrasing. I don't need keyboard warriors telling me how great the pioneer is. I needed bodies to go in and eat and drink, and no one did. And no one did. And you know what? If you want, I've said this a thousand times. If you see a building that you think should be historical, go to your city immediately. Do not wait until it's too late. It's too late <laughs> when they're demolishing it. It's over. You've already missed that. The ship has sailed long time ago. The zoning has to be changed by council in order for them to be able to refuse a permit. And that's a process. It, it, it's not. It's a, a three-month process. That's it. You have the person comes with their plans. They show up at the city. If it falls into the regulations specified for that zone. They, the, the council cannot say no. It's called discrimination at that point. That's they're, right. They're not allowed to make a decision based on their personal views of what belongs there. They have to make the decision based on the fact that the zoning laws dictate what goes there. That's right. If you don't like something, I can't stress this enough, go to your council right now. And if you see a building you want to save, start saving it today. Don't don't wait. But speaking of saving things, nice tie-in, by the way. Um, the uh, Sorry, for reading this, La Pointe Claire is, uh, has oh, yeah. become a heritage site, the village. The village. So you've got the windmill, the Saint Joaquin Church, the Presbyterian, the house, and the buildings that were all related near the to that carriage life. All that, all that crescent near, yeah. the, near the it's beautiful. Prime, prime land too. But it's a heritage site, so it, it'll be nice. They're actually doing an archaeological dig. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Tell us about the dig. You got invited to the dig. I got invited to. Well, I, yeah, I got. Into, I heard about the dig. Went crazy because <laughs> that's so up my alley. I basically feel that. I love history and knowing that there's hundreds of year old things under there and, and they're digging them out carefully and they're checking holes and it's just a great place to to, yeah. to see this experience happening. They will be starting again in the new year. So they had several locations and they've found ceramics and bones and it was a site of a cemetery. So Okay. Lovely that it's being yeah. preserved because yes. it's it's so historical <laughs> out there. We can't move forward moving we remiss if we don't mention the floods I have to talk of two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Jim Bass, great job. You yes. really you really did a lot of proactive work on this one, which was excellent. And uh, Jim Bass and his team, I hate to just discount. I say Jim, but you guys know I mean everybody. There were lots um, of people who weren't even involved with the floods who were front and center at Pierre Fonk Comprehensive High School making bags, uh, filling up sandbags. People who weren't affected. People were coming from out of province to help. So that kind of shows you uh, the kind of resilience that people have. I thought that was really, really impressive. As you were saying, um, cities and municipalities being more proactive, saying we're not getting caught like we did in 2017. I they feel bad for the mayor of uh, Il Bazaar. Il Bazaar. Oh, he God. reached out, he wanted to put a temporary measure in. And, and the government said no. God love him, they told him no. no. So they want something more permanent. And I get that they want something more permanent, but what are they doing for the next spring? Like it's 2020, we're, we're, we're getting... going to blink and it's going to be May. It, so. Yeah, so these guys were looking for a solution and they didn't get it. So I'm not sure how the spring is going to, let's hope we miss a year. Yeah, and, and, and just a <laughs> thing I was, when I was doing the research for this, Rhonda, I remember like a small things, but the Gallo Bridge, because of the water level, got closed for a couple of days. Like, it wasn't panicking we're get, the streets We're getting used to it. That's the thing. So these are two century floods. So let's, like you said, let's hope we get a reprieve, uh, especially for everyone. Um it's a lot. It's it's psychologically, it's a lot to deal with. Even as reporters, we're going in, and it's not as easy as it sounds to go in there and, and look at everybody. You're weeping as you're holding your camera. What you yeah, what you don't want to do is highlight people's misery. You know, the last thing you want to do is go in there. It's like, hey, can we can we take photos of your of your of your ruined stuff? No. How can we help? How, how yeah, can we make things you easier? You want to put the anybody with an instinct wants to put the camera down and start rolling. And just yeah, that's it. So. Uh, you know, thanks to the volunteers out there. Thanks for everybody and their goodwill in the spring. Every, there was so many people. And you yeah. know, a lot of connections have been made <coughs> by people. Like I met Danielle Elikori during that time. Oh, yeah. I met Scott Lego. Like I've had a great year of meeting new friends. And, uh, and it's nice to see people yeah. just get out there altruistically <laughs> and help. So yeah. hopefully next year we don't report on flooding. That yeah, would be let's, awesome. Let's, let's hope yeah, yeah. that we're not reporting on flooding I mean, in 2020 because it it's not happening. Will. Uh, highlight for me, I have to say, uh, was with you at the beginning of the summer when we, we got the time. tour 
the Champlain Bridge. I mean, it, it make it sound like it was just Rhonda and I. There were other reporters there. Yeah, but we it, we felt like we were superstars. It was sort of and, our own thing. It was great. Yeah, we were superstars on a boat. We were under. Oh, yeah. Really That's special. right. It was quite a process. Yes, it was beautiful. We had to go through the security oh, check, then the helmets and the hats and that the glasses. Then the boat, and then up, then we, well, then we, no, it was a, sorry, it was a van to the boat, then we walked up and uh, got to see it. It was really, really neat. We really felt part of history yeah, on that one. That, that was, was a cool. good experience. Because was... again, yeah, you know, the REM's being built and the and the, uh, the Champlain Bridge was built. You don't often see new things around here. Not hugely new things. Yeah, like so new. that was cool. And, it would uh, kind of be like as if you were in Expo 67 and it was built then. Exactly. Like the you got sort of a tour that. just before it started, which yeah. would be neat. Now, uh, I guess a shout out to the, the our provincial government. Uh, Illo Tort, anyone? That one needs some TLC. That one needs to be fixed. But today. But yeah. Yeah. And that'll get us to the Vaudreuil Hospital that has been pushed down the, the, the calendar yet again. Exactly. So so there you go. Um, I guess the Grand last, Park, our last little one. We the, that, that's a big one. That's 3,000 hectares. Plus the uh, 140 that they bought last week. So that's going to be a huge sort of connecting green space. Uh, there'll be no development. They'll be preserving wetlands. And... Uh, Parts of it will be a park for people. I think it's great, and I, I it's love win win. It. it really yeah. is. You know, it's uh, it, it's good. Like on, on one side, I know people do want to develop and have the opportunity to move out here, but some of the places that they're preserving would have been so uh, cost prohibitive to actually like drain wetlands, put in cement, build homes. But when you do that, a wetland moves. It doesn't just go away into space. When you no longer have a place for the water to go, it just shifts. That's right. So we do need these wetlands and. It's an amazing thing that's been done. And to tie into what our other story is, wetlands are also a good preserving agent against floods, right? If you've only got concrete and no trees, you're going to flood. So uh, that's a, that's kind of a, I don't that's know. Our that's our year in review. But that's we our year in review. There's more, but this is what we wanted to, to give you. These are our highlights for you guys. Okay, we have Just Seriously coming up next. Yeah. Oh, now we get to, now we get the goofy part. All right, guys, this is our favorite part of the segment. We giggle tremendously preparing this yes. for you. And this year's, this year's, the final, <laughs> seriously, of for the... the for, of 2019. Of 2019 is going to be about the flood map. Come right? on. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> come on, guys. You put out a flood map. It's ginormous, and it basically encompasses everything. It's almost like one big fat insurance plan. If I, if I say everything's going to be flooded, then I'm good to go. Now, I could never confirm this, but I heard this as a whisper... Parts of the new flood map were because it was caused by clouds in the clouds. photos. They thought clouds were water, so they, they included it. When I first looked at the flood map, it's like, like a lot of West Islanders like, really, I'm on this? I've never been flooded at all. What the heck is going on? There was a lot of panic and a lot of anxiety for people that had their homes near the water that were not part of this. Anyway, I think there was there was an adjustment. We know there was an oh, adjustment. Oh, no, 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 no. There was an Everything adjustment. Everything got picked up. Only because there was a meeting. They the, the CAQ, the provincial government, had meetings. And there was one at Fairview. Uh, excuse me. There was one at the Holiday Inn in Point Clare. You and I have been to plenty of events at the Holiday Inn in Point Clare. I've never seen it that packed. Packed. And I mean, packed. we were like this, and there were people outside who couldn't get in, and they were people waiting to get to that mic. Now, bureaucrats who don't want to be at uh, public meetings, you see that all the time, but like they could, they were dreaming to just not be there. Yeah, you can see it in their faces. Sometimes. They just didn't like... want to be there. I think they knew the message they were sending was not strong. And uh, shout out again to Jim Baseman. He brought the house down saying, you know, like, uh, just talking to them, saying, you know, like, could you prepare this? Could this, you know, you've, you're adding undue stress to people. It was like if Jim Bates had turned and said, I'm running for mayor of Montreal, he would have had everyone vote for him. I think he would anyway, to be honest with you. But you know, like, he would, that, that, but that was a really interesting statement because he went as a resident. He lined up like everyone else. He didn't pull rank. He didn't do anything like that. And he really brought the house down. And with, can uh, we honestly say in the city of Montreal, Jim Bates is the flood expert? Can we yeah. give him that? Oh now? yeah, come can on. He be the, can we be like the expert in the quotes, like he on, yeah. when he's on the news on, on at the night? Probably the something he probably something he wasn't interested in being, but he is definitely he's, he, come on, he he's knows more about hydrology now and civil engineering than most of us will ever learn. Exactly. So, so uh, shout so out to all him. those guys. Yeah. Shout out to what a great year we've had. Um, yeah, it was a good year. It was a good year. And as always, they go by snappy quick, and I'm sure before we blink, it'll be 2020, and we'll be reporting to you guys the uh, pertinent news then. All right. If you like our show, please follow us on Spotify and major podcast networks. We also uh, put this on the Montreal Talks Facebook page yeah. and, of course, on the West Island blog Facebook page. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, Happy Hashem. New Year.